In today's video, I'm going to be showing you five different ways that you can use to troubleshoot experiences that you're building in VR during development. Some of these are going to be by using the command line tools. Some of them are going to be by using plugins in Unity. And lastly, I'm going to show you some really cool features that the Oculus Developer Hub has. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. The information that you see right here, it says loading engine, initialization. You can also see calling join. This is what I call the debug area. And Anytime we're building an experience, it's, you know, it's really helpful if we can see more information about it, right? So what I'm showing you right here is a debug area that I developed to basically put information in there. You know, in, in my case, I am loading the Agora engine, so I'm calling, you know, join channel Dilmer XR. I'm also printing some information about the SDK. And in this case, I'm currently using the camera. That's why you can see me. So that's why I'm getting an error saying that the camera is currently being used, which is, is actually good timing because I wanted that error to happen. So how does this work? Well, let me show you how it works. So if we go into the scene, the second scene here, we're gonna go, and I'm gonna be putting this in the description of this video. So you're gonna be able to download these completely. So if we go into Agora, and we take a look at the actual debug area, which is which is a prefab here. And you're gonna be able to basically, you know, reuse that prefab. But that prefab has a world space canvas and also has a canvas color, a graphic raycaster. Normally the way that I set this up is I, I have the script at the label, in this case, the text box. And then if I wanna enable it, I just basically just check this box and then how many lines I'm going to be displaying. In this case, I'm just gonna display up to 19 lines. And then basically what is gonna happen is going to recycle. So the way that I use it in code is actually pretty, pretty easy. So this is using currently a singleton implementation that I have, also the TextMesh Pro GUI, enable debug, max lines, and then basically there's going to be a couple of methods that I'm going to be calling from other scripts. One of them is going to be log info, which is going to be showing green by default, also the timestamp because I think it's helpful to know when that happens, and also log error, this is going to be obviously red, and then yellow, it's going to be for log warning. So, so if I look at a couple areas where I'm currently using that, if I go into Agora, Unity video, you're gonna see that the basically the syntax is going to be logger. So if I do logger, it's gonna be a singleton. I can do instance, and then I can do log error, log info, or log warning. And then I'm using that all over the place because it's it's more visible for me if something is happening, and I can look at the canvas. Obviously, you can still use your debug that log, which is if I go into the scene transition handler, this is something that you can you know you can also use, but you're not gonna be able to see these logs unless you're using something like the log cat, which is going to allow you to see some of those logs. The next thing that I really recommend to do whenever you are troubleshooting your games is we wanna use the Oculus Link implementation either over Wi-Fi or by connecting to a cable. So that's basically what I have right now. If you look at my Oculus Quest, I am connecting via USB-C and I'm gonna go ahead and initialize the Oculus Link within the Oculus Quest 2 just so that we can basically debug this scene. So as you guys can see, I already initialized the Oculus link. So let me go ahead and get back to the main scene, which is going to be the setup. And we're gonna start from here and I'm gonna walk you through the entire experience. I'm also going to go into the scene transition handler. Let's say that you wanted to troubleshoot your game, right? You wanna know if you're having an issue, this is gonna be the second tip of actually doing debugging with Oculus link either with the cable or if you're using Wi-Fi over the air, you can also use Oculus Link that way. So I'm just gonna add a breakpoint there and I'm gonna click on Attach to Unity. Obviously, if you're using a different ID, it's going to be similar. And then what I'll do here is I'm gonna hit play and if everything works, I should be able to use my Oculus Quest. And you can see that it hit the, the breakpoint. The reason why I did is because I'm running on the Oculus Quest. So one of the cool things in here is I can do, if I wanted to step, you know, step over, see what's happening, I can see that this is null. I can also look at my local scene here and look at all the different variables that I, you know, that I that I have set so far. I can also use the immediate window if you wanted to. But basically that's the whole point of using the debugger, right? You're gonna have access to every single instance. I can use the Oculus Quest and I can, obviously I can just go ahead and start the host. And it's gonna take me to the host and I'm also going to be able to, you know, test the experience. If I wanted to, let's say, if I wanted to debug, you know, when somebody selects leave channel, let's say that I go into that code, I can find that code in my, 
in my actual script folder, which is gonna be under Agora. And if I go in here and trying to remember exactly when I implemented this, there we go. So let's say that I wanted to add a breakpoint there. And if I go back into Unity and I want to select leave channel, I'm hoping that that's going to be executed. And you know, obviously that got executed because I added a breakpoint there. But the idea is that you can, you know, you can debug your experiences in, you know, in Unity with the device connected. So that's going to be another way that you can troubleshoot your experiences by using, you know, Oculus Link and also your preferred IDE. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit continue and I actually click on play to stop this. So another way that we can also troubleshoot our experiences is by using something that is called Logcat. And the way that I have it right now set up, there's multiple ways that we can use it. We can use it by going into, you know, program files, Unity, and then basically your editor and Android player platform tools. And there's something called adb.exe, which we're gonna be covering in more detail. But the, the way that you can access that path, if you're curious where that is located, you can go into edit, and if you go into project and preferences and actually go into external tools, then you're gonna see that we have the Android SDK and you can get the path that I just show you from the command line by clicking in here, copy path, and then basically browse into that. The first thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure you can connect to your device, devices, and then dash L. So you're gonna see that this is currently connected to you know the, the Quest 2, which is the one that I currently have connected. So this is interesting that it says, I don't know why it says Hollywood, but I think, I think that's funny. But anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull an application on my Oculus Quest 2. And then I'm just going to open up the XR Toolkit Multiplayer right on my, on my Oculus Quest 2. And what I wanna show you while that is running is that we can also execute this command to be able to see what's happening right now. So the application that I executed is the XR Toolkit with NGO. And you can see that right now, if you look at, let me go ahead and kill this. If you look at LOCAT and then dash E, it's going to allow you to type in an expression. And in this case, I'm just searching for Unity. So it's basically gonna look at anything that has Unity and then it's going to display. If I don't do this, it's going to give me everything that is happening on my Oculus Quest 2, which I don't wanna see. In the case that you wanted to see that, you could do that. But in my case, I just wanna say, well, maybe I just wanna do XR Toolkit, see what's happening with my specific application see if some of my logs, you know, that I'm that I'm printing out, which I can see in here, they are actually getting printed out. The, there are some times where you're not gonna see this, so make sure that this is something that you need to do as well. When you deploy your application to the device, make sure you do development build, because if you do development build, you're gonna be able to see some of those logs. If you don't do that, the logs are going to be stripped down, so make sure that you do that. But yeah, basically you just do log cat and then an expression, you're gonna be able to see everything. So if you look at this lining here, I can see scene transition handler, set scene state. That's something that I actually did before doing this video. And you can see that these are some of the logs that I'm printing out. So if you wanted to see debug that log, do a development build, and then just use your ADB command with the log cat and then an expression which, it, which could be Unity or it could be just the name of your app. So that's one way that you can do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill this. And the other way that you can also do, if you go into Package Manager and we go into the Unity registry, you can also download the Android Loka, which I already downloaded and installed. So you just gotta import it and then that will install automatically. And then the way that you access that is you can go into Windows and then you can go into Analysis and then click on Android Loka. Once you do that, you're gonna get this amazing feature, which I really like because it's all within Unity, right? You don't need to leave. I don't need to go into the command line, try to figure it out what the command is or which Unity editor. I have multiple Unity editors, so I don't wanna have to figure that out. But in my case, in this case, I think this works great because it will tell you which devices are currently connected. You can also set it to out of run, so it keeps listening. I can also do something cool here. If I wanted to, let's say that I wanted to look at this specific application, I can look at that application and it already knows that this is running under Unity. So it gives you, you know, different options in there. So if I wanted to do this for some reason, and let's say that I wanted to just search for, I don't know, UID, it basically will filter everything out based on the expression that you're typing in here. You can also pass in a, a regex if you wanted to do that. You can clear the log if you wanted to clear the log. There's also more tools in here. Want to take a screenshot of it, you can. Memory window, they also have, you know, memory. If you want to look at memory, more profiling information. 
you can do that as well. So that's going to be the Android LogCat and also how you do the LogCat by using the command line. Another tool that I really, really like, and I'm gonna go ahead and, let me go ahead and change this back to no filter. I think it looks cooler. <laughs> and then, so another tool that I really like is gonna be Graphy. And Graphy, you can download also from the Unity Asset Store. I also already have it in my package manager, so I'm just gonna show you here under my assets. It's called Graphy, and if I click on view in the App Store, we can, it's gonna take us to that. You can basically download, it's completely free. And I think it works really well and it looks amazing. It provides you with frames per second, the average, the minimum, the max, you know, allocated memory, whether you're running a mono, audio. I mean, it just has a lot of customizations that you can also do if you wanted to offer this in your own game. Let's say it as a developer option. You can also customize it, you know, to, to basically to fit the theme of your game. I'm gonna show you here how it looks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and enable it. It's really easy to add it. Once you download it, basically all you have to do is go into prefabs, drag and drop this prefab into here, and you're gonna get basically what I'm looking at right now. So if I wanted to play this, I'm not gonna put the headset on, but I'm just gonna show you what is going to display as soon as I, I hit play. So if you look at it, we can see, you know, this is running 330 frames per second. Obviously it's running on my computer. So it's pretty, my computer is pretty fast. I can also see how much reserve memory, allocated memory do I have. Also some audio information, what the resolution is, what the graphics API is that I'm currently running on, GPU, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of helpful information that is going to help you troubleshoot. So if I wanted to go maybe to a different scene, you can see that this is using don't destroy on low, so the component is still alive. And I can basically just test it and make sure that I'm using this information for you know actions that I might need to I might need to optimize graphics or maybe you know the way that I'm that I'm pulling objects you know that it's going to give you more performance type information. The other one that I also wanted to show you it's going to be tools that are available in the for Oculus developers specifically. So if you're developing for the Oculus Quest, you can open up the Oculus Developer Hub and you can download these from their development portal, which I'll put also in the description of this video. But this is really cool because in addition to what I just showed you that you can use with Unity, you can also use the, the ADB LogCat from here. If I wanted to open it in here, I can also do that. If I wanted to you know, change this to Unity, if I was running a Unity instance, which looks like it's already closed, I can do that. But basically this is the same LogCat that I was just showing you, just using a different interface. The other thing that is also cool, you can also you know, enable metrics HUD. So, this one is going to be one that you deploy with Unity, which is the, the one that we have on Graphy. But if you wanted to use the matrix HUD that Oculus is providing, this is really cool. They provide a lot of different metrics that you can use. You can also do, you know, metrics uh, recording. You can enable that. Also, trace analysis gives you a lot of information. There's also information in here if you wanted to allow ADB over Wi-Fi. If we were using the Oculus Link over Wi-Fi, you may want to do and enable that. The other thing that I also noticed that they had, they had the performance analyzer and I haven't really used this, but it looks really powerful. So if I were to hit record right now, this is gonna start recording everything that is happening right now on my Oculus Quest. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit stop and I wanna show you, as soon as I hit stop, what's gonna happen, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna give me this local trace with you know, everything that is happening on every single CPU, what's happening on, you know, diff different parts of the actual device. So I can see it's still frames per second, you know, different services that are currently running on the device. And then basically use this data to, to analyze it and make sure that you can create experiences that are more performant. So there's also other tools that you can use from the Oculus Developer Hub. If you wanted to see more GPU system trays, you can use this tool as well. There's also uh, Oculus Audio Loudness Meter, which I haven't used, but you can also download it if you wanted to basically test how loud your, your audio may be. And that, I'm assuming that that's what that, what that is for. And if you wanted to do profiling on Windows for Oculus Audio, Render Docs is really, really powerful. And this is how you can debug graphics, you know, when you're doing development on Oculus Quest and Oculus Quest 2. So 
that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you. If you guys have any questions or you're using another tool for you know, troubleshooting issues that you have on your Oculus or Oculus Quest 2 or any type of VR headset that you're currently using, make sure to mention it in the comments because I might do a video about that as well. Or if you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you guys.